taking meaningful actions that overcome patterns of segregation and foster inclusive communities free from barriers that restrict access to opportunity based on protected characteristics. The township and its land use decisions does not discriminate against persons based on race, color, national origin, religion, sex, disability, or familial status, and reviews all land use applications in accordance with federal civil rights statutes. Public comment made on the basis of bias and stereotype concerning people within these protected classes will not be taken into consideration by the township in its deliberations. Okay. Moving on, Pledge of Allegiance. If everybody would please pledge and afterward, a moment of silence for our men and women in uniform and our first responders. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America, America and to and the Republic, Republic of which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, moving on. I would like to announce that an executive session was held for legal and personnel matters on January 26 at 6 p.m. at the Copley Whitehall Sewer Authority public meeting room. Can I have a motion for the approval of minutes, please? I'll move, Fisher. Go ahead. Do I have a second? I'll second. Mr. Ginder, second. Mr. Tre Secretary, please pull the board. <laughs> A slip of the tongue there. Okay. Almost. Uh, Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Ginder? Commissioner Ginder? Aye. Commissioner Sloniker? Aye. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Roman? Yes. And President Marks. Yes. Motion passes. Uh, sorry. Yeah, motion passes six eyes, one one, no vote. It would be five and one, Tom. Five and one. Mr. T is not present. No, it'd be six and zero. Oh. Okay. Yes. You had six commissioners vote aye. And then you had one commissioner that's not here, so he's a zero. All right. Okay. That's okay. We're 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 on target now for a good night. All right. Okay. Public hearing and voting on conditional use. Conditional use hearing of Matthew Nomi for the use of the property located at 1058 Third Street, Whitehall, PA, tax parcel ID number 640-804-308. 1521 as a mixed use commercial residential property with the two units and a separate and separate entrances for each unit. Mr. Gross, would you like to take this over? Uh, of course. Um, good evening. Uh, is Mr. Nomi, uh, is he on and in the uh, participant? Well, Melissa, can you unmute him, please? Looking for him. <clears throat> Let's see if we see him. I have one call in user. If you're calling in, um, can you please speak and let us know who you are? Not speaking. Um, I don't have anyone. Or I'm looking through. I'm looking through the list to see if there's anyone who would appear to be. Uh... There's a way for them to raise their hand, isn't there? Yes, they can use their raise hand feature. Looks like maybe um, the last oh, someone named Mary might have. Is that exclamation point mean or hand raise? Can the person uh, type in the chat box? Oh, wait. Uh, yes. I, think, I think that Mary was just unmuted. Yeah, I just 
Unmuted Mary, um, are you here for the conditional use hearing? No, no, I am not. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Gross, what do we want to do from here? I guess if I can ask if uh, Mr. Gittinger heard from Mr. Nomi, if um, I don't see him, so. No, I heard nothing from Mr. Nomi before I left this afternoon, a uh, little after 4.30, uh, end of business. No, I, I've not heard from him. Uh, is, uh, Ms. Gittinger, uh, do, you, do you know what our time limit is on this? Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, no. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know the deadline. I'm sorry, Attorney Gross. That's okay. Um, well, President uh, Marks, I, 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 I see a few options. One. Um, I, I know we have the court reporter here, and normally we like to um, to do these at the beginning so that she can, or I'm sorry, I'm not sure if it's a, uh, a man or a woman, but um, so the court reporter can be uh, released from, from being at the entire meeting. Um, you, you could certainly postpone this to the end of the agenda if, uh, if you want. You could, um, I mean, this is the time for the hearing. If there's no evidence to be presented, you could decide it uh, based solely on the record. We could introduce Mr. Gittinger and he could present the, the record and uh, there wouldn't be any testimony. Um, the reason I'd asked about timing is just to make sure we don't have a deemed approval, but uh, assuming there was time, uh, I suppose you could also uh, uh, decide to continue it to next month. Well, at this point, Ms. Cooper is, is being put out and, and time is money. And in all fairness to her, I don't want to hold her up till the end of the meeting uh, because he's not here, which is unfortunate. Why don't we look at extending this out to next month? If Mr. Gittinger could reach out to him and tell him that this is very important, that there's a cost associated with this hearing. Well, he would already need to pay to re-advertise and um, uh, there, there would be additional costs. I, my only concern about that is that we not have a deemed approval situation. So, um, understood. Uh, how do you think? Is that something you could check in the next uh, period of time here, or not, Mr. Gittinger? I can certainly look first thing in the morning. Um, no, that's fair. Um, so then. Uh, Joe, it's uh, the issue with with uh, continuing it is, you know, there is potential uh, there's chance for a deemed approval. So it's okay if we extend this to next month. Well, that's the the issue. If you do that, if if we're up against the time the the required time frame in the ordinance, and you make no decision. Um, it can be deemed approved before you would have a chance to hear it next month. Okay, understood. But that's to no fault of our own. That's where I'm a little confused here. I understand. So, I mean, that in that case, the other option would be to uh, proceed without the applicant and reject it if you if you feel that's appropriate, and he would have to um, start over again. All right. Well, with no. I, I guess I just call for a motion at this point. Well, I think it would be best if, if we could to um, to put Office the evidence staff. to to let me uh, let it, let me uh, have Mr. Gittinger sworn, let him put the evidence he was going to put in, uh, so that there is a record, and then um, then you can close the record and make the motion. Okay. Excuse me, Attorney Gross. Yes. Um, I do have his email, so I it's Lee. I had. I sent him an email. I don't know if that's going to help to see if he, you know, if he's going to be joining. 
and they don't have to deny it, right? If they review it and they find that it's favorable, they can still approve it, right? Correct. That's what I'm saying. That we should we should have Mr. Gittinger put in put in the record of everything we have, and and the board can make a motion without additional testimony. Yeah. Can can make a motion based on what is there and without just without Mr. Nomi's testimony. And I'll keep an eye on my email just in case he responds. Okay. Um, so, and I'm, I apologize. I, I'm not sure the court reporter's name. Uh, it's Sherry Cooper. Hi, Sherry. Hello. <laughs> Would you mind swearing in Mr. Gittinger? Not at all. Please raise your right Sherry. hand. Hi, Chris. <laughs> Um, do you swear by almighty God or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, please answer, I do. I do. Thank you. Mr. Gittinger, will you please uh, state your name and address for the record? I'm the Zoning and Code Enforcement Officer, Chris Gittinger, for Whitehall Township, 3219 MacArthur Road, Whitehall, PA, 18052. Uh, Mr. Gittinger, you're familiar with the application that's before the board this evening? Yes. Uh, was this uh, hearing that that uh, is commenced that has commenced tonight? Uh, was it advertised? Yes, it was advertised in the morning call on uh, January 31st and February 7th of 2022. Was the property in question posted? Yes, I posted it myself on February 7 of 2022. And were neighbors given notice of the hearing? Yes, all neighbors, I'm sorry, all property owners owning property within 200 feet of the subject property were sent notice on January 26, 2022. Mr. Gittinger, can you uh, please state the, uh, the your opinion and thoughts regarding this application? Uh, I have not been involved in my opinion about this application and went through the planning commission who revert reviewed it thoroughly. It, uh, other than the request for conditional use, it does not impact zoning. Uh, well, Ms. Gitcher, the, um, planning commission, uh, reviewed the application. Is that correct? Yes, they did. And is their conclusion, uh, maintained by the township? Yes, there, there's a letter from the Bureau Chief of Planning, Zoning and Development, uh, which would be Township Exhibit Number 1, uh, together with the Township Engineer's comment uh, letter and the Bureau Chief's comment memo, uh, which was sent to the applicant. And uh, I uh, appreciate your earlier comment, not your opinion, but can you, uh, if, if you would, uh, state the planning commission's conclusion regarding this application. The planning commission recommended approval uh, subject to the, the conditions or the comments in those two attachments to that letter. You have anything else you'd like to add, Mr. Gittinger? No. Uh, at this point, um, Ms. Rackus, uh, have you heard from the applicant? No, unfortunately, he has not responded. Do, um, do any of the board members have questions for Mr. Gittinger? Uh, Mr. Gittinger, this is uh, Commissioner Fisher. Just real quick question, approving this, does this set precedent or is this a case by case type basis? Oh, it's a case by case type basis. Uh, the applicant uh, has gone through the process. He's request, requested a hearing. He's not, not here. Whatever your decision is going to be is only going to be precedential on the facts of this presentation. Okay, thank you. It appears there are no other questions from the board. And typically at this point, the applicant would make his case. He is not here. Um, are there any, and Melissa, perhaps you can help again to see if there is anyone else who would like to um, uh, uh, make a statement regarding this matter? Any interested parties or objectors? 
If there are any interested parties or objectors, you can raise your hand using the raise hand feature or chat or use the Q&A feature. I, I, I don't see any, do you, Melissa? No, I don't see any. Uh, with that, uh, President Marks, uh, the the, uh, the hearing would be concluded uh, unless I'll give I'll I'll turn to Ms. Rackus one more time and and see if uh, if she's heard from the applicant. Unfortunately, again, no. Um, so we can close the record, uh, and uh, President Marks, I'll turn it back over to you for a motion uh, on this matter. All righty. Uh, do I have a motion pertaining to the conditional use for Matthew Nomi? I'll make a motion approving a conditional use request after hearing held on February 14, 2022, regarding index 1994 21 and the property located at 1058 Third Street, Whitehall, Pennsylvania. Do I have a that second? Good enough. Second, yes. Commissioner Warren. Yeah, have a second. Uh, comments were made already. Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Ginder. Yes. Commissioner Warren. Aye. Commissioner Fisher. Aye. Commissioner Roman. Yes. Commissioner Sloniker. Aye. President Marks. Yes. Public hearing, the vote is uh, six ayes, zero nays. Passes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Cooper, for your time tonight. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Sherry. Too. You're welcome. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gross, for your diligence on that. Okay, moving on. Courtesy of the floor. Melissa, do I have anyone on for courtesy of the floor? Um, I haven't received any requests. Is there anyone, um, if anybody wants to speak, they can use the chat or Q&A features. No, it doesn't look like we have anyone. Okay, with that being said, I'm closing courtesy of the floor. Public hearing and voting on ordinances. Bill number 1-2022. An ordinance authorizing the acceptance of a proposal for purchase of a 2022 Ford F350 4x4 truck for the fire department in accordance with section 3.20 in the home rule charter which requires authorization of acquisitions in excess of $25,000 by ordinance. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the public? Need a motion. Oh, do I have a motion? I'll move, Fisher. Do I have a second? I'll I'll second. Go ahead. Sloniker. Mr. Sloniker. Now, yes. any questions from the board? Any questions from the public? There are no comments from the public. Mr. Marks. Yes. Uh, just do we, is this going to be an outdoor truck or is there, is this, will this be stored under cover? I will defer to Chief Nelson if, if he's on. Chief Nelson, are you available? Assistant Chief Builders on. Okay, Assistant. David, sorry, raising their hand. David? Yeah, that must be Chief Nelson. 
Can you let him on, Melissa? I um, you're now unmuted, David. Oh. Can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you, Chief. Uh, yeah, no, the truck will be an outside truck. It will have a heating unit for uh, the outside or for the tank during the winter, and uh, or we could use antifreeze, either one. Thank you. Okay, with that being said, we had no one from the public, correct? No. Okay, Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Fisher. Aye. Commissioner Sloniker, aye. Commissioner uh, Warren. Aye. Commissioner Roman. Yes. Commissioner Ginder. Yes. President Marks. Yes. Motion passes six ayes, zero nays. A bill passes. Bill number 2 2022. An ordinance authorizing the acceptance of a proposal for installation of a Cedar Forest Projects Pavilion at the Whitehall Town Township Parkway in accordance with Section 3.20 in the Home Rule Charter, which requires authorization of acquisitions in excess of $25,000 by ordinance. Do I have a motion? Uh, Commissioner Warren, I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Commissioner Warren, sure. second. Mr. Roman, I'll give it to him. Any questions from the board? I just this Commissioner Fisher, just a brief comment. Um, I just want to um, just thank uh, Commissioner Warren. This has kind of been his pet project that he's been shepherding along for the last few years through a series of grants. So um, I just want to call him and just uh, just recognize some of the work. And I want to recognize everyone in the township who's worked on this. And um, I really look forward to seeing this pavilion come to fruition. Anyone yeah, Commissioner else? Fisher. Yes, uh, I also like to acknowledge a few folks. Uh, everybody from Lee's, Lee Rackus's office, especially Carl Lagler, who put a lot of effort into this design, uh, Tony Coca and Keystone Engineering and the Whitehall Copley Sewer Authority and North NBMA um, Water Authority. And I hope I didn't miss anybody. The mayor was very supportive of it. So a shout out to anybody and everybody who helped. And uh, Commissioner Ginder asked about last week, um, we have four grants totaling about $306,000. And there was also $155,000 in this bud year's budget. So um, we're hoping to build it as it was designed on paper. Any other commissioners? Any comment by the public, Melissa? There are no comments from the public. Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Roman? Yes. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Sloniker? Aye. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. President Marks? Yes. Bill passes six eyes, zero nays. The next one, Bill 3 2022, has been pulled from the agenda tonight. Uh, the group asked for an extension into next month. Any other comments on this or questions? Uh, Commissioner Marks? Yes. In this case, do we make a motion to table or how is this handled? That's a great question, Mr. Roman. Just pull it. It doesn't get discussed. It just doesn't get discussed. Pull. So it's mute. Yeah, it's good. Well, the, 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 the developer wanted it pulled for the night. They're coming back in March, so it's just pulled. There's no vote. Well, I, I'm confused, Phil. I don't know if Mr. Roman's question is, can he comment on this? Or do, would you like to make a comment, Mr. Roman, or was that just a general question? No, I just, it was just a question regarding protocol, because I was, I was expecting there would be a motion to table. Okay. Well, because we're not talking about it or discussing it all, it's just going to be pushed out till next month at their request. Okay. Okay. Public hearings and voting on resolutions. Resolution number 3186, a resolution approving the cost of living adjustment for eligible participants of the police pension fund. Do I have a motion? Motion. I'll move. Okay. 
Mr. Roman was first, I believe, Mr. Soniger second, or how do you want to handle that? I was first. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Do you have any comments from the board? <clears throat> do I have any comments from the public? There are no comments from the public. Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Sloniker, aye. Commissioner Roman. Aye. Commissioner Ginder. Yes. Commissioner Warren. Commissioner Warren. Sorry, double tap. Aye. Commissioner Fisher. Aye. And President Marks. Yes. Resolution passes six eyes, zero nays. Resolution number 3187, a resolution conditionally approving the major subdivision plan of Whitehall Mall, Raymore and Flanagan, loaded it, located at 2001 Whitehall Mall. Index okay. number. Sorry. That's pulled as well, Joe. Yeah, I think okay. that's handled. Okay. That has also been pulled off the agenda because it's related to. Bill number 3-2022. So, moving on. Resolution number 3188, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor to enter into a sidewalk maintenance agreement with PennDOT for the Smenton Bridge and to execute the application on behalf of Whitehall Township. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Do I have a second? I'll second Fisher. That being said, any comments from the board? Uh, Commissioner Marks, can we yeah. have some clarification on this bridge? I understand it's going to be an agreement re pre uh, pertaining to a new bridge. Is that correct? Yes, that's pertaining to the new bridge. Uh, I'll let the mayor, I'll defer to the mayor and let him explain exactly what this agreement means. Yeah, it, it's uh, Route 329 over the Lehigh River uh, near Lafarge, and the old bridge is uh, sorely in need of replacement. Uh, the uh, bids should be let sometime around June um, in construction beginning uh, either late in the fall or early next year. Um, the uh, what we're being asked to do is is to take care of the maintenance of the sidewalk along with uh, Northampton Borough, and we have uh, decided to agree and we'll uh, commemorate this with uh, an agreement um, that we will take care of the sidewalks during uh, either I think it's. Uh, even years and Northampton will take care of that on odd years. So it's uh, basically trying to guarantee that we get the, the uh, any problems with the sidewalks, um, any uh, snow that accumulates on it will be taken uh, care of by the public works departments from either the borough or the township. And just so you know, Andy, um, this project is going to be uh, to build a, uh, a bridge to the south side of the existing bridge. Uh, during the course of its, uh, of its construction, the older bridge will maintain uh, automobile and truck traffic, uh, except for, I believe, the last week where they will uh, finish the, the completion of the opportunity to go across the bridge and the bridge to the north will be uh, torn down ultimately. At least that's the plan right now. Oh, okay. Are these sidewalks going to be lighted areas as well? There will be lights on it, yes. Thank you. Any other comments by the board? Here, this is uh, Commissioner Warren. Uh, the last time I was in the meetings with PennDOT, um, they had they had uh, agreed to a 10 foot wide sidewalk to allow two way traffic for the DNL um, Northampton side and Whitehall side. 
Is that still the case? Are you talking about the shelf under the the bridge, Jeff? No, the sidewalk. We uh, we requested that they build a sidewalk that could handle a person walking across the bridge and also somebody on a bike going in the opposite directions. And the last plans that I saw had a 10 foot wide sidewalk, which would accommodate two way traffic. Um, I'm going to have to yield to okay. uh, maybe. Frank has that in his head because I do not. There's a lot of stuff in my head, but unfortunately that's not one of them. <laughs> I, I think that was the agreement, but I can't be positive. Fair enough. That doesn't, this is for the agreement. That's, that's fine. Any other comments by the commissioners? Any comments by the public, Melissa? No comments from the public. Okay, with that being said, Mr. Secretary, please call the board. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Roman? Yes. Uh, Commissioner, oh, we got that. We got Warren, <clears throat> I'm sorry. We get you, Jeff. Yes, I voted aye. Okay. Commissioner Sloniker, aye. And hmm. President Marks. Yes. Uh, resolution passes six ayes, zero nays. <laughs> Resolution 3190, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners, Township of Whitehall, Lehigh County, Pennsylvania, establishing Camp Whitehall rates for the year 2020. Oh, wait, I missed one. I apologize. Resolution number 3189, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners, Township of Whitehall, Lehigh County, Pennsylvania, establishing pool pass rates for the year 2022. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Mr. Ginder, do I have a second? I'll move. Sloniker. Sloniker. Any comments from the board? Okay, I have one. Are they gonna stay status quo, Mayor? Do you have any information on this? Mayor? No, oh, you caught me at a bad moment there. What was the question again? Are pool pass rates gonna stay at their current level or is there an increase, do you know? Uh, they're going up $10. And uh, for annually for a family? Yes. Uh, what about daily rates? Do they stay the same? I believe so. All right. Any other questions from the board? Any questions from the public, Melissa? There are no comments from the public. Okay, Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Ginder. Yes. Commissioner Sloniker, aye. Commissioner Warren. Aye. Commissioner Fisher. Aye. Commissioner Roman. Yes. President Marks. Yes. Resolution passes six ayes, zero nays. All right, resolution 3190, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners, Township of Whitehall, Lehigh County, Pennsylvania, establishing Camp Whitehall rates for the year 2022. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion, Warren. Do I have a second? I'll second it, Phil. Any questions from the board? I have one. Uh, at what point there's a rate here for Copley residents? I just want to make sure the Whitehall residents have first practiced at, at what point would the Copley residents be invited to attend? Mr. Mayor, I'll defer that to you. $150. 
Now, the question, the price, at, at what point would they be able to to uh, to book Camp Whitehall? Um, Tony has not established a, a final uh, a final date for uh, for uh, entering a, a uh, for entering the uh, camp during the summer. Yeah, that wasn't that that wasn't the question, Mr. Mayor. The question okay. is, this is also open to Copley residents. When is the decision made? We have to serve our residents first. When's the decision made to let Copley residents participate in this? Uh, I, I don't know the answer to that question, Joe. Okay. I don't have it in writing yet. Okay. I'm, 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 willing, I'm willing to vote on this. I, I just want to make sure it's known that Whitehall residents absolutely positively should have first crack. They, they uh, absolutely they will. For Camp Whitehall. Absolutely will. Any other questions from the board? Any questions from the public, Melissa? There are no comments from the public. Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Mr. Warren? Aye. Mr. Ginder? Yes. Mr. Fisher? Aye. Mr. Sloniker? Aye. Mr. Roman? Yes. President Marks? Yes. Resolution passes six ayes, zero nays. Resolution number 3191, a resolution approving the amount of interest return to be credited to police pension fund member contributions for fiscal year 2021. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Do I have Swanker. a second? Do I have a second? I didn't hear that, whoever it was. It's, it's uh, Bill Ginder, Mr. Ginder. Mr. Ginder. Any questions from the board? Any questions from the public, Melissa? There are no comments in the public. Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Sloniker, aye. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Roman? Yes. President Marks? Yes. Resolution passes six ayes, zero nays. Resolution 3192, a resolution authorizing the mayor of Whitehall to enter into a stipulation and settlement agreement by and between JERC partners, LXII11, LLC, the zoning hearing board of Whitehall Township. And Whitehall Township. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Do I have a second? I'll move. Ginder. I'm um, yeah. Sloniker. <laughs> Any comments from the board? <coughs> Any comments from the public, Melissa? Yes, I have Stephanie Cobalt on behalf of the applicant. Mrs. Cobalt, if you could please state your name and address for the record. It's now unmuted. Oh, okay. Hi. My name is Stephanie Cobalt. I'm an attorney from Fitzpatrick Lenson Buba here on behalf of Jerk Partner 62 LLC, just here in case the board has any questions. I know of none unless there are any comments from the public. Can I make a quick question? Yes, you can, Mr. Fisher. Uh, this is Commissioner Fisher. So as part of this agreement, uh, 7th Street is being extended. That's correct? That is correct, sir. Okay. And that, um, I mean, it's written in the ordinance is written that 7th Street is going to be extended to township specifications. And I mean, this is going to be a fully functioning road and not necessarily some like a, I dare say an alley, like this is going to be a workable road. Correct? Yeah, um, the settlement agreement provides that 7th Street is going to be extended so long as my client goes through with the um, purchase of the property and the land development. 
obviously, if that doesn't happen, this will not be extended um, because it is settling um, a zoning appeal that was based on our uh, application. So, yes, it's not going to be extended as an alley to answer your question. Thank you. And it does leave the board also um, a little leeway during the land development process. If there'd be something you would see during that process um, with regard to the road, you know, you would want a sewer inlet somewhere or water inlet somewhere um, that would also be accounted for in this agreement. Okay. Um, and I guess, uh, I mean, I hate to ask this question this way, but like uh, there will be an enforcement mechanism, like we can make sure that this occurs for sure. So as, as I mentioned, um, the extension of the road is contingent, of course, upon my client going through with this. If we abandon the project or terminate the novation, then we don't have to complete the road, obviously. Um, but the agreement specifically provides um, that um, you can go through to enforce via court because the settlement will become an order of court. So it will be enforceable uh, just as any other order of court is enforceable. And the township certainly could do that. Um, if they needed to. Okay, uh, thank you, Attorney Cobo. That's all I have this time. Thank you. Any more questions uh, the board for Attorney Commissioner Cobo? Warren? Commissioner Warren, just one general question: um, Is the land that's going to be developed on the east side of Seventh of the new Seventh Street extension, or will it be on the west side on the larger parcel? I don't know who wants to comment. Attorney Cobo, Frank, who would like to comment on this? This is Frank. I can jump in. It's got to yeah. go where the body got to go where the body shop currently is. Before and I believe, I believe Frank, that is this is Stephanie. I believe Frank, that is behind the Harley Davidson yeah, dealer. On, it'd be on the east side of that of the Seventh Street extension. Very good. Thank you. Okay, any other questions for attorney Coble? No questions from the public, Melissa. Um, we just have Ken Snyder who commented about the location 7th street. In what part of the township? Would Mr. Snyder like to be heard or is he satisfied? Do we have any way of knowing that? Okay, he says his question was answered. Okay. With that being said, Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. Mr. Sloniker, aye. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Mr. Fisher? Aye. Mr. Roman? Yes. President Marks? Yes. Resolution passes six ayes, zero nays. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cole. Moving on, resolution number 3193, a resolution authorizing QBE Specialty Insurance Company to enter into a settlement agreement with Amgad, Amgad, Ahmed, and I apologize for the, I apologize, very difficult name to read, for $15,000 in exchange for a release of all claims against Whitehall Township and the Whitehall Township Police Department. Do I have a motion? I'll move. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Warren. Any questions from the board? Commissioner Roman here. Go ahead, Commissioner Roman. Can we clarify the facts on this that the Whitehall Police Department is being charged with discrimination, even though no discrimination has occurred? I will defer to our attorney to answer that question. Mr. Gross? Well, Mr. Roman, I wouldn't characterize it as a as a charge. There is a claim in the case. Um, it's a federal case. It's based on a civil rights violation. Um, so that's the plaintiff's claim. Obviously, we deny it. Uh, and uh, this settlement, um, as has been pointed out, is uh, being described by our insurance company as a nominal settlement that they want to pay in order to, in order to avoid the cost of litigation. We are not admitting any um, 
any wrongful act by the township or by the township police. But I, I can see in the short term, this is definitely the way to go in terms of uh, uh, getting rid of this uh, claim against us. But what effect does this have on the township long term in terms of uh, providing an incentive to uh, charge the township? And then we have to pay out monies later for other um, charges that are um, invalid. Was that a question for, for me, Mr. Roman? Yes. I mean, how does this impact us long term? I, I, I see in a short term, it's it's uh, probably prudent to pay this and get it off our back. But in the long term, how does this affect us when we're paying out a claim, when we are admitting there was no fault by our police officers? So we're not, I'm not sure about admitting that there was no fault. We, we absolutely deny that our, that our police officers did anything wrong. Our insurance company, the, the township has insurance for this type of claim. Our, our insurance company has recommended and intends to pay this settlement in order to avoid the cost of litigation. I, I don't have the ability to determine whether in the future someone else might want to do, make some sort of claim. I, that, that's beyond my, uh, beyond my abilities. Um, but I'll say again, it certainly has been and is our position that the township and our police did absolutely nothing wrong. We were defending and would would continue to defend this case, but the cost of defending it would be um, substantial. And the insurance company has recommended that, that they pay the nominal settlement to end the case. So this is akin to paying ransom? Oh, come on. Those are your words, Mr. Rowe. Okay. Are you satisfied, Mr. Roman? Yes, I just think in the long term, it's, it doesn't set a good precedent. Any other board member? Joe, can I ask a question? If the Certainly board's may. not. Um, Jack, is it true or, or not that this same person will not have an opportunity to sue for uh, the same event down the road does this close the door on any additional uh, on, on any additional fault to be found as a result of settling this this resolution this settlement will include a general release by the plaintiff against the township or police officers and everyone else in, from whitehall township involved uh, that that is uh, absolutely the case we 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 get a release that his his claims against the township and, and our police are are over based on this so andy does that clarify that for you in terms of long-term uh, possibilities of coming back to bite us yeah that's that's part of it uh, Mayor, um, but in addition to that, my concern is it becomes a, a precedent where it acts as an incentive for other people to file these civil rights claims when there were no civil rights civil rights violated, which creates an incentive for more of these to happen in the future. So yes, part of it was, is there any secondary uh, claims against us after this? pertaining to this incident, but then in general, does this open the door down the road where people look at this as an easy way to get some money from the township? I, I hear you, Andy. Um, and uh, we, we hate doing this every time, but it uh, it's prudent to do this at this point oh and I, I i agree in the short term it is in the long term i don't believe it is but in the short term you're absolutely correct but in the long term i i think it may may um, encourage more more claims just like this and then we'll be paying those claims out with the understanding well 
this is what we have to do to get this behind us. And then it happens again and again and again. Okay. Uh, any comments from the public, Melissa? Any other commissioners? Um, we have one comment from the public. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. We do have a comment from Ken Snyder. He asked, are the police officers covered personally? Uh, I'm going to defer back to our solicitor to answer that question. I assume, and I, I hate to assume, but I'm, I'm going to, um, and he can confirm. I assume the question is when to say they're covered, are they covered by the release? Absolutely. Right. That they are, uh, there will not be any claims against any of our officers um, regarding this matter by, by this plaintiff. And the entire case, all those claims go away based on this settlement. I, I, Mr. Snyder, if that didn't answer your question, I'll, I apologize. Melissa, can you check and see if Mr. Schneider is happy or satisfied with that answer? Um, <clears throat> Uh, Attorney Gross, yes. is it is Mr. It Schneider? Oh, hold on a minute. Can you please identify yourself and please state your name and address? Yes, uh, Ken Snyder, forty-two seventy-two, Abigail Lane on Whitehall, Pennsylvania. Uh, attorney Gross, does that mean that at that point, if an attorney wants to file a personal claim separate, because you see sometimes they do that civilly, are they clean? Are they are they taken care of under? Either the police union or our E and O coverage. So there, there. These are civil claims regarding this incident, and the township, and the township police, including the officers, are all getting releases from any liability as part of this resolution. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. With that being said. No other questions? Mr. Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner Ginder? Yes. Commissioner Warren? Aye. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner Sloniker? Aye. Commissioner Roman? No. President uh, Marks? Yes. Resolution passes five ayes, one nay. Moving on to other discussion items, zoning amend, amendment request. I don't know where to go with this. Uh, President Marks, I can take this. I do have the material, uh, which I believe sh you should have all received in your packets as well. Uh, so it's an application from Jandal Land Company. Uh, Chris McLean, who is the attorney for the applicant, I saw he was on earlier uh, and, and you would still be so if so i'm um, with your permission um joe i would ask that he be unmuted it's uh it would be his presentation to the board um this is the initial uh step of this uh and as is customary the applicant makes a presentation to the board regarding the general uh, nature of the request so that the board can decide if they want to um, refer it to L&L for additional consideration. Melissa, can you please unlock Mr. Christopher McLean? You're now unmuted. Thank you, everyone. Good evening. <clears throat> Mr. McLean, can you please state your name and your affiliation with this? Certainly, I'm Chris McLean. Uh, I'm an uh, attorney at Fitzpatrick Lentz and Buba. I am here on behalf of the applicant Jandal Land Company. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you. Um, as Mr. Gross mentioned, uh, on behalf of Jandal Land Company, uh, the equitable owner of four parcels, the northern end of the township, we have submitted this request. Uh, and this evening, I'm asking that you refer the proposed ordinance amendment to the uh, Legal and legislative committee. Uh, the long and short of it is we are proposing a preserve space cluster development in the uh, R1 zone with a number of criteria that must be met. 
uh, among them a 50 acre minimum combined tract size to be served by public water and public sewer. Uh, there would be a 25% permanent preservation and undevelopment of the, the tract area. And in exchange for that 25% preservation, uh, the balance of the site would be uh, subject to development pursuant to the R4 dimensional criteria uh, with a cap on 125% uh, total of the lots that would be otherwise allowed by right in the R1 district. Uh, the reason we're bringing this in front of you, uh, the comprehensive plan mentions in a number of locations uh, that cluster developments uh, is something worth looking into. Um, but when we look through the ordinance, cluster developments are not specifically outlined in any of the zoning districts. Uh, so that's why we brought, uh, rather submitted this request uh, to, to see if we could get some traction. Uh, and what we would like to do is uh, have your referral to the uh, LNL committee so that we can uh, have a detailed review uh, by your consultants and staff, uh, look at the proposal, have it vetted fully, and bring something back to you for more formal consideration in the future. I think you were muted. Uh, Jack, where do we go? Can I take comments from the board for, for this? Or how do we make this recommendation to LNL? Uh, well, you can certainly take comments from the board and then you would uh, have a motion to refer it to LNL. So you, it, you probably want the motion first procedurally, okay. uh, motion second, and then, uh, and then any comments from the board. Can I get a motion to hand this zoning amendment request from Mr. Jandall off to L and L? Do I have a motion? I have no motion. I need no second. Jack, I guess at this point it's mute, correct? If there's if there's no motion, there wouldn't be further discussion. I, I sorry, Mr. McLean. I, I guess if I may ask, is there anything particular about the proposal which the board finds objectionable? Just so that perhaps we can consider that internally with our team, so we have some feedback from uh, from you folks. Any discussion from the board on that issue or that question? We, we looked at cluster zoning or cluster housing years ago up on those northern tracks and there, there really wasn't any interest in it you know, because of the density uh, that, that they were looking to put on the housing from what I remember of it. Does that satisfy you, Mr. McLean? I um, mean, it's it, it's certainly helpful, um, and that's why we had thought that by in, including a cap on the absolute maximum, we could address that that concern. Um, but if it re, re, the density remains a concern, that's something we can certainly take under consideration. Commissioner Warren, another thing when I read this, I mean, it does say 125 percent of what you can develop on the the lot now or the lots, which is giving you greater density than you normally would develop. Um, some of these parcels, this affects more than one contiguous parcel in the in the township. And um, some of these parcels have land masses that can't be developed in the first place, steep slopes or mountainous or shallow rock. So, you know, it could end up with overdevelopment in those areas if we factor that in. Uh, it does also say you can develop on the declared open space. So um, I just can't wrap my heads around on how much how much housing it could could it lead to, and if it is beneficial. Well, I guess if that's the case, that's a perfectly legitimate question and concerns. That's why we asked to be uh, forwarded to the legal and legislative so we can talk through those issues. And if there's uh, something to change in the ordinance to address that type of concern, we could do so. Any other comments from the board? Yep. And I think, uh, Mr. Marks, uh, Adam Jandel is is on uh, with me. I believe he is also muted. If you wouldn't mind unmuting him, uh, I, I believe he would like to uh, to address the board as well, please. No, as a property owner, that's fine. Uh, 
Melissa, can you unmute Adam Jandel, please? Hey, Adam. Um, I unmuted him, but it seems to me. Hello. You're now unmuted. Mr. Good evening, Jandel? folks. How, how you doing? Welcome. Yeah, I, I guess the, the only question that I had is, is I think a gentleman had mentioned about whether or not um, it would increase the density. And certainly, I think all we're asking for at this point is, is a consideration to, to really talk further on it. I mean, certainly, um, if if you've got a concern about the 125 percent, that's something we can talk about. I mean, with any consideration for that? Well, I did not get a motion moving forward, and I couldn't get a second because I didn't get a motion. So at this point, Jack, if I'm not correct, because there was no motion on this, there can be no action moving forward to take this tell and out, correct? Yeah, you you would need a um, you would need a motion to move okay. forward. I, I, I guess the only thought that I had was is is there's a piece of property it, it can be developed. We, we thought possibly doing a cluster development and preserving farmland, preserving land um, for for the benefit of of everybody involved made some sense. Um, I mean, is it the township's preference that a property that is 50 acres, like what we're talking about, is is developed? Um, I guess by right in, in its entirety, I, th I thought we thought it was a good thing to consider. Um, we're just looking for some feedback um, at, at this point. Any comments from the board? Yeah, uh, uh, Commissioner Marks, uh, I'll make a motion if it furthers the possibility of more discussion and more research into it. Anyone entertain a second? Going once, going twice, going three times. No one entertains a second. So once again, it's a mute point. Uh, Mr. Gross, what other avenues does Mr. Jandel and Mr. McLean have here moving forward? I don't. I I can't really give them advice, and would prefer not to do that. I mean, they, I, I'm sure um, Mr. McLean is uh, is an accomplished uh, land use attorney and can advise his client. But uh, I'm certainly happy to speak to him if he wants to. If he wants to give me a call as the township solicitor. Understood. Thank you, Jack. Well, Mr. Yeah. McLean, you heard it from the horse's mouth. Thank you, Mr. Marks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jandel. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Reports of public officials. Board of Commissioners. I will start with Mr. Fisher. Uh, thank you, President Marks. Uh, so just two quick things. Uh, we have two scouts who are pushing forward with their Eagle project in the Whitehall Parkway. We just signed off their uh, proposals. They're going to be submitted to the local uh, Mincy Trails Council District Office, and we'll see if they get approved. Uh, once they get approved, uh, the Environmental Advisory Council um, will be assisting them, and uh, we'll be trying to put up some uh, really nice bird feeders, uh, um, bird houses uh, throughout the parkway. So um, it's going to be a good project. It's good for the environment. It's good for uh, just people coming through the parkway. So. Uh, and like I said last month, it really helps with the, um, it just really shows the scouts wanting to step up with the community and volunteer. Um, I also want to say, so uh, the Environmental Advisory Council is moving forward with their uh, change to, with their uh, new bylaws that they've written. Uh, those are hopefully going to be going into effect shortly. They're just going to concern the uh, management and government of the council. So I'm looking forward to that. And the second thing, uh, I think Lee Rackus, if she's still on, um, I just want to thank you. Uh, you got me this uh, planning magazine from uh, summer 2021 that had some really interesting uh, EV ideas um, that we could consider in the township. So this is something I'll pass around to the council. And um, I just want to thank you for that. And I thought it was very thoughtful of you. And um, we'll go from there. So. Uh, thank you very much, and I uh, yield my time back to uh, President uh, President Marks. Okay, if I could, I want to apologize. Melissa just sent me a message. Uh, two citizens would like to comment on the 
last discussion item, the zoning amendment request by Mr. Jandel. Uh, Melissa, if you could put them through, I believe it's Mr. Hosa and Mrs. Mr. Snyder in whatever order, it doesn't matter. Okay, Mr. Hosa um, sent the first chat. Uh, Edward Hosa, you're now unmuted. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, the general public was and not- if I could, And if I could stop you, could, could you please state your name and address? We know who you are, but this protocol. Edward Hosa, Phillip Street, Whitehall Township, PA. Thank you. Uh, in the last agenda item or that was discussed uh, was the property in question, the Yadischak Family Trust International Homes property, yes or no? That's correct. Did the Janda Land Company have a, a sale of the property or is it contingent upon a zoning change with the township? That information I do not have, Mr. Hosa. I don't know if anyone else can answer that question for you. I can try, uh, Mr. Marks. I only, and, and I'm, I expect that Mr. Hosa has the same information that I do, but that the, the application indicates that Jandal Land Company is the equitable owner. So the, settle, the settlement has not, uh, come across um, the morning call yet, so it must have happened quite recently. Well, equitable owner, uh, Mr. Mr. Hosa, so as of January 25th, their application indicates that Jandal Land Company is the equitable owner, which would mean that they were um, a buyer typically, and there are several ways, but typically that would mean they're a buyer, a buyer under an agreement of sale rather than record owner, which would mean that they had closed. But, but that's speculation, simply based on the application. Just wanna make the comment that how unfortunate that the process of protecting this farmland uh, had been going through Lehigh County farmland preservation. And uh, obviously that uh, process has uh, yielded this current result. Well, thank you for can the you, comment. Thank you. Can you explain? Comment. It was considered. It was considered for open. Was it considered for open space preservation? We were awaiting information from the township to proceed, and with the current farmland preservation program at Leah County, it would have required a contribution from Whitehall Township to preserve uh, the farmland in question. Mr. Hosa, I was never apprised of that information. I don't know, maybe the mayor can, maybe I can defer to the mayor and he could provide some more information to the board because I was not aware that I, that I can. inquiry was made. I can. Um, the, uh, the, the amount of uh, money that we would have had to uh, have put into the, uh, to the acquisition um, into the farmland preservation uh, seemed onerous. And at the time there was another, there was another potential buyer of the property, uh, who lives adjoint adjoining the property in the village of Egypt. And that was at that time, <clears throat> the thought process that that neighboring property owner would be purchasing the property from the Yadishak family trust. And obviously that did not happen. And that adjoining property owner was then going to keep the property in uh, farm, put it in Lehigh County farmland preservation. I will, make a I will make a statement though. Um, I've heard in the past where comments have been made, no more open space. And you look at other townships, they're starving to make to preserve as much farmland as possible. Um, Whitehall residents should know that every parcel within this township that isn't owned by the township itself right now can be developed and will be developed. So um, you got to look at the long term cost of maintaining instead of maintaining a mile worth of road, are you going to maintain two miles worth of road? So um, I'm not that the property in question half can be serviced by gravity, half would have to be um, sand mount or septic, and it's in the drainage uh, 
the the drainage path of uh, MBMA's uh, dam. So, I mean, you got to look at the whole the whole picture. And uh, Lehigh County passed a referendum for open space preservation. We haven't Whitehall hasn't gotten its fair share out of that money. Any other comments, Mr. Hosa? We'll comment that many of the current board members remember that uh, International Homes had made several presentations to the county, or I'm sorry, to the township. And uh, one of those presentations about five years ago uh, was open sp or a uh, open space area between Roosevelt and Spruce, the area that the Copley Whitehall Sewer Authority would not put in a pumping station for, and that area to use, be used for um, whatever the township wished, such as uh, soccer fields or uh, lacrosse fields, baseball fields, to assist with the need at the time for additional playing space within the township. So that was one of the options for this property uh, in the area that could not be or would not be sewered by Copley Whitehall Sewer Authority because they, uh, at the time, did not uh, believe in adding any additional pumping stations uh, to uh, the system. In terms of open space by Lehigh County, that program was about 10 years ago, and uh, there are no funds in that fund that Mr. Uh, Commissioner Warren brought up. The funding right now is mainly farmland preservation. Yes, that was the Green Futures Fund. And if I add it up correctly, we left, Whitehall left $1.1 million on the table that could have been used to restore our parks and preserve open space. Um, yes, that, that program was disbanded. The money that was left over was put into the general fund the year that Lehigh County commissioners gave the Happy Mill tax rebate, and they created a farmland preservation fund that we pretty much haven't been able to tap into ever since. So the $20 million farmland, rest, farmland preservation, or green, what is it, green future funds, the leftover money that we could have tapped in to help maintain our parks and open space, got put into the general fund for a one or two year tax rebate that really and now we can't tap into it. So that was a that was a big failure on Lehigh County's part, in my opinion. And I will add, Mr. Commissioner Warren, that that all occurred before the current administration yes. and also the past administration at Lehigh County. I think one this past year, one township um, tapped in over a million dollars worth of that money that we're all taxpayers of Lehigh County are paying for. And we haven't we're not, we haven't tapped in it ever since uh, the last open space project that you, you have participated in. And that ta particular township also contributed a substantial amount of money into that farmland preservation area that they preserved. So it did, does now require, it does now require a contribution from each municipality. It's not 100% from Lehigh County. Anything else, Mr. Hosa? No, that's it, Commissioner. Okay, thank you. Uh, Melissa, can you open it up for Mr. Schneider, please? Okay, Mr. Schneider, you're now unmuted. Good evening, Ken Schneider, 4272 Abigail Lane, Whitehall. First of all, um, this method that we are following be Zoom. I had discussed with you last time about this Zoom arrangement and what you were going to do about going public. I had questions for uh, Mr. Jandel's attorney and I wasn't acknowledged. Is he still on the line or is he gone? I don't know. Let me look here, Mr. Schneider. And I apologize, Mr. Schneider. I don't have the ability you know, to, to do everything at one time. I know. And you, you know, if you want to call me out on this one, you certainly can. I, I, I don't, I don't because we all, we're all working under different arrangements and I understand that. And 
uh, not everybody's accustomed to the Zoom, and I get it. Okay, but here's, not, an, here's an important question that came up. There was no second, and on top of that, there was no question given to the public if we had any questions before it became a muted issue. Now, I don't know if the protocol required you to get a second before it goes to the public, but that would have been a perfect time to do that, but that's here and gone. How much was the dollars and cents that the township could have wrote a check for uh, Mayor Harrickle in order to preserve it, may I ask? Well, Mr. Schneider, if I, could answer, if I could answer your first question, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but no, because okay. I didn't get a motion, motion, Mr. Schneider, or I did get a motion, but I did not get a second, Right. That made that made it a mute issue, and at that point, I didn't feel it was necessary to really have public comment on it because the board did not agree to move it forward whatsoever. Okay, so we'll, we'll I, agree to disagree. I'm fine. Okay, I'm fine. And I I don't know. I'll I'll defer to our attorney. I don't. You know, this is a little complicated, Mr. Gross. What are your feelings on this? I mean, Mr. Marks, I agree with you completely. If okay. Um, if there's no motion to move it forward, uh, there, oh, and I, I apologize, there was a motion by Mr. Roman, right. it wasn't seconded, there there really is no time for comment. The, the, the application failed. It's, um, it, 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 it's not, nothing is happening on it. it it's not tabled and I mean, it's, it's over unless they bring something else back and, and start the process all over again. So um, it's, uh, and, and I would say at this point, it, it appears that Mr. McLean and Mr. Jandel left because their, their, their proposal failed. Um, so uh, certainly while you, you, I'll leave it to your discretion to entertain comment, um, um, this, this matter is from a procedural standpoint was concluded because there was, there was no, there was no motion to move it anyway. I understand. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Schneider, I in no way wanted to come off as confrontational. I just wanted to clarify things and I, I certainly want you to be heard. So whatever comments you have, uh, speak your mind. So I, I, understand, I understand what happened and it's, it's over and done, but this ties back to the previous commissioners meetings. When I asked you about the procedures moving forward and having open public meetings, because things like this can happen. But 1 of the things I asked was that. The commissioners take a look at our open ground and see what we're going to be doing with open ground. You also know that there was conversations and maybe some of you do or do not on the legal legislative dealing with the hospital. I was pretty vocal that we need additional residential development in the township on different on different topics. And this would have been a perfect opportunity to look at this land. I didn't know which land it was until Mr. Hosa said so uh, to to discuss what's happening instead of absolutely no discussion. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm totally flabbergasted to be honest with you that the board of commissioners would just not even give a second to even open it up for a conversation because our township needs to start to address some of these issues for not only development, but what's going on with our baking ground. And I was going to wait until your reports were done to address your reports because maybe you had some reports this month that uh, based on last month's comments, but I can't believe that it didn't even get a second or a question. I mean, we have vacant ground and, and it, yeah, it's one acre minimum. What are you going to do with one acre minimum? And to sit down and say, make the comment that we tried cluster development. I sat on those committees when that stuff was discussed way back when. When was the last time this township addressed anything in development in this area as far as housing and bringing in um, additional um, people? To be honest with you, this Ken, this was just in front of us a few months ago. Uh, by the international homes. Okay. I wanted to develop that, and they wanted this, and they wanted that, and and everything else, and and the board just just said no, they weren't going to go to to what they wanted in in density up there. So so. Uh... This, just Still, was, this land I, just was in front of us. I don't know. I lose track of time. Maybe a year ago. I don't think it's much more than that. No, it could be because we, we we were meeting in person when it was in front of us, if I'm not mistaken. So let's not talk about that parcel. Let's talk about the part that in your board of commissioners reports that 
the overall review of our township, our land use, our zoning, how we're going to deal with this thing in the township as far as development, what's the comprehensive plan, when was the last time the comprehensive plan was reviewed, should it not be updated now, we have somebody trying to do an overlay. These are the kinds of conversations that I would expect that the commissioners would put on the table. I would have expected that at the January meeting that the commissioners or the president of the board or somebody would have sat down and said, in 2021, these are outstanding items. Let's see what we're going to do to review our township and move forward in 2022. I haven't seen any of that on January's agenda or even on February's agenda. And the fact of the matter that the hospital is trying to come up with an overlay um, proposal, right, wrong, or indifferent, it's affecting a lot of reg residential ground around it. It would be a perfect time to put that on the agenda to sit down and say, we need to review this and take a look what we have in our township. Or will we accept the fact that our township is basically going to lay in its present state and not move forward? That's a valid question because we are asking the hospital what kind of income is it going to be producing and things like that. And there is vacant ground up north that can be taken care of. And I just think that it's something we need to talk about. Joe, can I offer some information? Yeah, if I could say something first, Mayor. Sure. Mr. Snyder, I don't disagree, and I, I will certainly not use COVID as an excuse, but, you know, let's be honest. I, I, you know, should our comprehensive plan be amended and updated? Absolutely. Should our, should all of our code be, you know, looked at and amended? Probably. Uh, in reference to the medical overlay, that's something that historically has never happened in Whitehall Township. I never even knew something like that existed or a proposal like that existed until it was brought forward to us. And I don't know if staff wants to correct me, but there's nothing even in our ordinances that <laughs> in that type of verbiage. So this is all very, and don't get me wrong, I know exactly where you're coming from and I totally agree. It's virtually impossible to hold these meetings virtually. I feel strongly we need to get back on track because the rest of the world is. I understand we were under construction. I understand due to COVID, but moving forward, a lot of restrictions are being lifted across the country, across the world, and we need to be more proactive and get this building open so we can engage publicly face to face and solve some of these problems. But the last two years have been tough and it's very hard to do under this guise. Mr. Mr. Uh, March, when was the last time our comprehensive plan was reviewed and updated? I can tell you since it's been since it was created. <laughs> and okay. I'm sure, Excuse I'm sure me. You, yes, so go ahead, Lee. It's Lee. I can answer. I believe it's um, 2005, and I can tell you just you know, Ken, because you were involved in that process. Mm -hmm. Just what what President Marx is saying is true. Even if we wanted to, these have been dire times. We have been, you know, you know, as bureau chiefs, we were told, you know, for austere budgets, pretty much. For the past few years, we did not know what was going and what was going to happen. The last time we updated the comprehensive plan, it cost over $40,000. So that was not a ticket item that I was prepared to put in the budget at this point. Once we get up and running and, you know, look at things. Yeah, definitely. It, it's something that needs to be reviewed. But the comprehensive plan before that time that we did it in 2005 had not been updated since 1972. So I think we're still in a you know closer time frame than that. But I I get it. But we need to you know we need to have to be able to budget for that. And that was not the directive that we were given as bureau chiefs when we were preparing our budgets for the past few years. COVID hugely affected how we anticipated what could and could not be funded. COVID, COVID has affected everybody, but my point of, of attending the meetings in this is, is this. It's not going backwards. I understand that in the last two years, everybody did things different, myself included, okay? But when you, when you sit here and you look at the fact that the rest of the townships in, the, in Lehigh County is going through a lot of changes, and we sit here like an island and not discuss it. I would not have voted for a comprehensive plan update last year because it would have been impossible to do. But as we roll into this year, we have a board of a board of commissioners who have sat for quite some time 
at, in these positions. And I just think that it's time that on the agenda, you would see something and sit down and say, um, what does the comprehensive plan looks like? What's going on with the building? The things that are important need to be addressed. Uh, and that's that's my whole contention. I'm not even sitting down and saying that you should put cluster development on that parcel, but here's what I think. To take the position that says, well, we talked about it and we don't think it's really there. Well, you know what? I don't know if that's the right answer. You know, I just think going forward, it may not be the right answer based on what's in the bill out there. I know one thing to develop the northern tier, I'll call it the northern tier, as one acre parcels is not something that is ever going to work in today's society. It's not. You're not going to get a million dollar people walking to, walk to buy in this market. Now, we don't know what's going to happen in the future, but 2005, I would love to see the Board of Commissioners put on this thing that says something to the effect that the comprehensive plan needs to be reviewed. And part of the process would be that you take the legal legislative that the hospital's doing, you take the stuff that Jandal's doing, you use their dime to be educated on what's happening, and then and work your way through the process. Instead of just sitting down saying, no, we're not interested. Flat blank. That's exactly what happened tonight. I don't sure. know the sewer authority. I don't know how much money they have over there. I don't know if they can can put in a pumping station or some other good stuff. But the answer was just flat out right now. They, they can't, Ken, because we we've gone through the hearings with the five thirty seven plan. The sewer authority wants nothing to do with a pump station. Mister Mister Schneider, I can I I consider myself to have some expertise in this. A number of years ago, when that property was when when it was inquired to to redevelop that or to develop that property the sewer authority did we commissioned a study it cost us about twenty five thousand dollars and we looked at what it would take for the non sewered parcels that are developable over there in the northern tier yeah and in order to introduce that waste into a gravity system what would be required would be prohibitive to the cost of the ratepayers, both in Whitehall Township and because we are a co-authority, the the people of Copley. And what we would have to do, enabled to, and because of Spring Creek and the proximity to Spring Creek, we'd have to, there's a lot of environmental concerns there. We would have to induce, introduce multiple pumping stations and basically physically get the wastewater up to 145 pump we'd have to bore underneath 145 take it up that hilly terrain to get it over the hill onto the Swartz property and then take it down into the village of Smenton and the improvements that would be needed alone down in lower Smenton in order to handle the EDUs that would be generated by the northern tier we would have to do so many improvements. See, the, the, the hard truth is the infrastructure in this township, in, in some of these villages, when it was built and introduced, it was almost built on the scale that was needed at that current time. It didn't have, they didn't have any foresight put into additional EDUs being introduced into that, that that area, if, if you get my drift. Mr. Marks, tonight's not the night to get into the details. The only point that I'm trying to bring up is that these things occurred in 2005, 10, 15, or whatever, ever. Right. Impact fees, if it was reviewed at one acre, if it was reviewed as though it would be one acre development, yeah, it probably wouldn't be feasible. On the same token, if it would be quarter acre or third acre with cluster development, you have impact fees of $5,000 per unit, maybe it was. All I'm saying is that I think the commissioners need to do a land assessment study of the vacant parcels and look at the current zoning and see what we can do to attract reasonable development to our community. Now, I've expressed this strongly in another meeting, and, and I just believe that the township is in a position that we need to do this. And to sit back and say, well, it was done way back when. Well, way back when, when ground was $40,000 a lot, you know, that's one thing, but that's not the case today. And, and, you know, I just read in the paper that 
There's municipalities that are working with the planning commission to see how they can do group zoning to protect from warehouses and stuff like that. Well, here's what happens, folks. All the ground is being developed on the outskirts of us. All that traffic goes right through our township. And we get no benefit from that. But we have the traffic that goes with it. And all I'm trying to do is look at our current assets and assess it. If it hasn't been assessed since 2005, maybe now's the time to give it really some serious thought. It's not going to happen in six months, but it needs to at least hit agenda item to be discussed, or if not, a goal item for the commissioners to review. A five-year plan. What is the five-year plan for our township in this area? And maybe this is year five. I don't know, but there's no five-year plan from anybody that I heard of. I hear the recreation hasn't been done since I sat on that board. That was 2004. My God, it's 20 years it's gone by. It's time oh, we have to become a priority. Know. Mike, you know how I feel about this. Uh, Joe, can I can I be heard? Absolutely, absolutely Mayor. Go ahead. Uh, I sat down with Ken after uh, uh, a prior meeting and told him that I was uh, hoping to do three things. One, um, get a group together to, to put the, uh, uh, the money that we've gotten for the Mickley Pride and Farm, uh, put, to, put that to work. Uh, two, um, an ad hoc committee for a uh, new recreation comprehensive plan, and three, um, a, uh, uh, a another committee to look down the road five years, and I invited Ken to be a part of that. Um, that's going to be happening in the next few months, um, and Ken will will get to this situation that you're attempting to deal with. I think it's valuable. I think it's uh, appropriate and we'll get there. Um, but uh, right now, um, that's a, a bit down the road, not a whole bunch, but you know, did we or did we not talk about that? And, and uh, uh, did I not ask you if you would be willing to sit in on that? We, we, we did, and you know, okay. you know, gentlemen and, and ladies, you know, I've done a lot of development in a township and I said this to Mike, I could have lived anywhere I want because I own ground different places. I chose Whitehall because this is where I grew up. This is where my family is. And I just believe I'm not doing any more development, but I do think I have things to bring to the table to look at. We may not agree on some issues, but Joe knows, or Mr. Marks, I can agree to disagree. I don't want to be looked at as a, as a developer, speaking from a developer's point of view. I want to be looked at as a resident that has knowledge of the township and how we can benefit things in the township for the community going forward. That's all I'm asking. That's the position I'm looking at. What is the five year plan? How do we get this thing up and doing? How do we make these changes? We can't continue to, to spend the tax dollars that we have on the recreation like we do. We have to take good solid topics, break it down and, and say, this is what we're going to try to accomplish and put it on the agenda. And I know Phil knows this. If you would sit down and say, we're going to have a comprehensive arrangement, it will take us nine months to interview, find somebody, do what has to be done, and get it down the get it, get it in the pipeline. And all I'm asking to do is let's get it on the pipeline. That's all I'm asking. It should be something that you sit down and say, here's what we're doing to work our way through. And that's what I'm looking for our township to do. The retail section of our of our community right now, I consider that to be at, at absolute dire need of attention to find out exactly what's going on, compare what's going on to the competitive arrangement. I would have expected that somewhere down the line in the next two to three months, this would be put on our agendas as hot topics to review. And I think that's fair. I'm not getting into the details of what happens because those kinds of meetings would be the ad hoc committee to do that. But I don't wanna be sitting here in December and saying, well, we're working on the committee routine already. It, it's crazy. It's just crazy. And and Mr. Marks, from your side of the table, I would love for you to present an agenda of three common things that you would like to see your board of commissioners accomplish. Mr. And what those three things are during your, your presidency that you want to try to get it get get through the township or one item. That's what I'm looking for from our commissioners. Mr. Schneider, I couldn't agree more with every comment that you've just made, but I will make this statement, okay? Okay. And I mean since I've been on this board of commissioners for say the last six years, unfortunately, the way Whitehall Township is structured 
And according to our charter, what you have to understand is we have a very strong our uh, executive branch and basically a weak legislative branch, in my opinion, okay? The way I, the way I read and understand the charter. And, you know, a lot of these points that you brought up, I'll, I'll own, but a, a lot I will not own. And I will say that a lot of this is administrative and I'm not blaming, blaming just the current administration, but I'll call out past administrations. A lot of things fall through the cracks in Whitehall Township. And I say this with a clear conscience because I'm just as frustrated or probably more frustrated than you are on the lack of diligence and on the lack of uh, commitment or whatever you want to call it on the way things happen in this township. I mean, this is this is escalated into, huh, and I'm not complaining, I know what I signed up for, but it's virtually impossible to get anything accomplished. And, I disagree, you know, I disagree, I disagree, Joe. Joe, this is not Washington, D.C. This is where you can walk in, and I had a conversation with Mr. Harrickle about these issues, and I have conversations before. I couldn't do it before because I was a developer. This is a simple arrangement. Two guys sit down and have a cup of coffee and say, hey, what the hell do you want to do for the township this year? I don't know. Let's try to figure something out. And if we're at that point that that can't happen, shame on Whitehall Township. Can Mike I say something, Joe? Mike came to my office and we had a very friendly conversation. We did not agree with everything between us, but we agreed to disagree. And I'm okay with that. But I'm not okay with the commissioners and the administration sitting back and not making priority. The, the 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 Lehigh Valley Dairy is what 15 years sitting down there doing nothing. I don't know the answers. I'm not into government, but you you and the administration is, and I just believe that we're now at the point that we're at the tipping point. And if we don't address it, we're going to have a problem. We're going to have a problem, and that problem is called a vacant retail center because what's going around around us. We are still, and I said to Mike, the Lehigh Valley Mall and the Whitehall Mall is still rated as a B plus mall based on revenue. Most of the people that are in that chain at this particular point do a high volume and number one in their districts. But on the same token, look at the tenants that are moving in at this point. They're no longer A and B tenants. They're now C and D type tenants. So when you have somebody taking 3,000 square foot of space so you can sit down and play on, on a little computer games, that's not what our mall is about. I'd haul those guys in and sit down and say, guys, what are you doing? This is what this is the kind of thing I want to see on our agenda. Now, maybe that's an executive session arrangement, but address the issues. The other townships sure as heck are. That's why Hamilton Square is out there doing what they're doing and go over to 33. And you guys have been around and saw this stuff. And I just don't want to sit in this back corner here and say, oh, we should have, could have, and didn't. It's now time to do that. It really is. And I don't know, it doesn't fit into the category. If we had a land preservation arrangement that came from, from with Mr. Hose, and I don't know if he's still on the line or not, and that came in, and this particular parcel was, was something that the township wanted to see preserved, the commissioner should have been told that there was an offer to do it, and there was X number of dollars, and it was out of our budget, and we couldn't do it, but you should have been told that. Because you don't want to develop it, so if you don't want to develop it, you have the opportunity to preserve it. And that wasn't apparently done. That's wrong. That's just wrong. And that's all I'm saying that going forward, I would like to see on the agenda every time a plan of what we're going to be doing and how we're going to handle it and put it into effect. That's what has to happen. That's what has to happen. Commissioner Warren, can I, can I speak? Sure. Hello. Um, you know, not to burden on history, but back in 2008, we had like $7 million in debt. And the goal back then was to pay off that debt, knowing we needed this police station. And basically when it came time to put shovel in the ground for this police station, we had the cash on hand to pay off the debt. So, you know, and then the economy wasn't that great either. Um, but, you know, I think the cart is in front of the horse because you're talking about developing land use plans in the future or considering it, and you wanna do the recreation plan first. I think the recreation plan is dependent on how many homes, where the homes are gonna be built. Um, so, I, or maybe they have to be done in, in, in uh, at the same time. But, uh, you know, I, 
I've when the rec when the recreation plan was done the first time it was about 5% of the budget. It's now 4% of the budget. It seems like every time recreation comes up, it's it's a liability. When everything else is all we got to do it and no questions are asked and no matter what the amount is. And so um like you said, Mr. Snyder, I moved to Whitehall Township because of the amenities here. And if we want good quality neighborhoods, we have to have good quality amenities. And so it's a balanced approach and I don't disagree, but you know, a recreation plan was an unfunded mandate. There's no money. And I don't think the ad hoc committee is necessarily the way to go. It's, it's great for discussion, but you have to have people looking at where is development, how dense is it gonna be and do what we have serves us. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. That's all I have. Your your commission that was done on the recreation board is set up right now where we have small playgrounds and parks that contribute or get money out of a fund. The way it was 20 years ago is not the way it is today. We don't have the volunteers to open up the parks. West Caddy is, I don't even know if it's open anymore. That's why I'm saying that you need to do them simultaneously or if you look at the budget, the bottom line is that it never seems to move forward. My, that's my whole point. Get it on the thing, move it forward. If you sit down and say you don't need an ad hoc committee, actually you do. You need to get the residents involved that are involved in recreation in our township to work in conjunction, like Mr. Like Mr. Ginder said, to hire a company to come in to be an advisor to do it, to do the assessment and work your way through the process. There was a new law that was discussed by Attorney Gross last time around that said that you now have the ability to collect recreation funds from commercial arrangements. I think that was said. If that's a fact and we have a hospital that's looking to build what they're looking to build and work our way through that, that could be money lost because we haven't moved fast enough to collect those funds. That's all I'm saying. And if you don't address this stuff, then the end result is it's gone. I, I agree with you, Mr. Snyder. Um, when that. I said, when I said, um, just a plain ad hoc committee that was in lieu of having a consultant help guide us you looking at, you know, exactly. That's my point. It can't just be the, the committee should be made of people from the different parks in the recreation commission it should be ad hoc, but you have to have a consultant help you guide with planning. I mean, otherwise, you know, not 1, 1 person is a planning expert. I agree, but it starts at the, it starts with administration. And it starts with the board of commissioners who have to sit down and say, these are the four or five items that we want to get accomplished and get it in the pipeline and move it forward. That's what has to happen. We don't even, we're not even at that point. Here's, a, here, here's an example. Um, last open space preservation that we acquired was, um, it was a uh, park adjacent to uh, land adjacent to Egypt Park for Belmont Glen. We're we're five or six, five or seven thousand dollars away from getting a sediment control plan in place so that if there the silk became available, we could we could level that ground out and add a soccer field there. Right now it's it's unused land. Maybe that's maybe that's good, but uh, you know, there's there's an example, a small dollar amount, seven thousand dollars, we couldn't get it done. Do the other commissioners feel what I'm saying is a reasonable request? Bill and anybody else that's there, and I, I can't see the names. What, what you're saying, Ken, is what we've been saying all along. You have a have to gold tell. mine. We, we've been talking about these things all along, and you get hamstrung a little bit here, hamstrung a little bit there, and 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 there's sure been enough of that the last three or four years. I mean, we inherited a wall that none of us wanted. Right. And that's just one example. I mean, it goes on and on. Uh, you know, we haven't reinvented the wheel. We, we, we've done our best with what I had, with what we had. Uh, could we have done more? Eh, probably. You can always say that looking back. That's an easy assumption. I don't think anybody's been asleep. Uh, but, but we have had our, our share of shots taken at it, so to speak, that, that we just had to stop and deal with them. And I'm not even going to get into what they are. I understand. I understand, but, Phil. But, but I'm just nobody, asking for nobody priority. Nobody again has been derelict on, on on this board as not wanting to get anything done. That 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 I will make that statement in, in defense of this board, and and the administrations that have been in here, you know, over the last couple of years. I mean, you know, we we, we took on a 15 million dollar 
building, we paid that down, you know, we, we have kept progressing. You know, we're, we're the Hunsaker bar and they're finally getting that brought up to date down there and, and water and sewer and, and using it for something else. I mean, it's the, the money spent on the rail. There's been money spent all over, probably not enough, but, but you know, it's, it's easy can to stand back and, 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 you know, look at what you're seeing now. It's, it's a lot harder when, when you've, you've been involved in it over the last couple of years and, and, and you know what, what's been done. And, and, and a lot of people have stepped up to the plate. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get into names and stuff, but, but there's been a hell of a lot of good done and a hell of a lot of people put a lot of time in, in this township to, to get things done. And, and that we can't take away from them. Phil, don't take, I'm not, this is not intended to say that you did anything wrong. I'm not. No, no, I understand, Ken. Okay. And I, and Ken I agree. I agree with what many, many of the things you've said. And I agree about your disagreeing with things too. You and I have a disagreement. We've also agreed on things and, and that's fine. That's, that's what keeps everything working. But, but, you know, we have been going, Ken, nobody's been asleep here, but, but your input is, is greatly appreciated. I'm, I'm not saying your input has no value. Your input has a lot of value, Ken, with your experience and stuff. It, it's a matter of working together and, and, you know, taking what we have and, and, and making it better. And not just ripping the hell out of everything. Agreed. I'll leave it. I'll leave it. I have no other comments for the rest of the night. Uh, I was waiting for the end, but we covered what had to be covered. Thank Any you for your time. Mr. Snyder. This is Commissioner Roman. Yes. I just want to say thank, thank you for bringing these issues up. I mean, I'm all about, you know, having a board or any organization be a very goal oriented board where you have timelines, you have, uh, you have deadlines and and you have strategies i mean when i was on the school board i was part of the group that put together the feasibility study that resulted in some of the upgrades to the uh, school district property and what we did we we looked out we looked out 30 years and we put together that plan and it, it seemed to be a pretty successful outcome and so i'm all about that but i, I think as a board and as an administration, I think we need to focus a little more on setting deadlines. I mean, we can't even set a deadline to get into the facility to have a eye to eye meeting. We're just told, yeah, it's coming, it's coming, where I believe we should say we're gonna be there March 1st. And if we're not there March 1st for a in-person meeting, we will we'll hold it at an alternate location, but we can't even set a deadline to meet. But I, I'm all with you. I think we should set deadlines and stick to them. Thank you. Uh, this is Commissioner Fisher. Real, uh, real quick comment. You know, I just want to thank uh, Lee Rackus and everyone in the planning office for everything they've been doing for these last few years and understanding the difficult circumstances that we've been working under, and for what that and for what has been accomplished. And I know we need to do some things. There's some realities that we are working through. COVID aside. We are trying. I definitely support Commissioner Ginder's art, um, statements earlier about what we have done, what we have accomplished, and that we are not just sitting around, that we are working as hard as we can. So that's all I'd like to say. So I'd like to thank Lee and uh, planning. Thank you, Mr. Schneider. Anyone else? Melissa, anyone else? Any other comments? We have to move on here. Um, we have a comment from Edward Hosa saying, why not a regional plan with the LVPC? And then also the public comment from Lorianne Fainel. Um, what was the amount that Wayhall could would have had to contribute to Lehigh County would have needed to preserve farmland? Well, the first question I, I, I don't have an answer to. And the second one, I was unaware of until tonight. So. I, I, I can't answer either one of those questions. Does Mr. Hosen want to come back on and and um, Mr. Hosen, you're not unmuted. Thank you. The first comment was municipalities surrounding Whitehall Township have entered into agreements with the Leah Valley Planning Commission to have the planning commission assist them in doing their updates to their comp to a regional comprehensive plan. And that is an option for Whitehall Township. As regards to the farmland preservation, the numbers were run uh, prior to the uh, 
big uptick that we've seen in real estate prices. So the numbers would have to be rerun by Lehigh County Farmland Preservation. But um, as Mayor Harrickle said, it was a substantial amount and uh, many other municipalities uh, either instituted an increase in their earned income tax to pay for the open space or for the farmland preservation, or they took it uh, from their general fund. Um, Mr. Hosa, this is Commissioner Roman. Yes. I had a question. Is it not true that the uh, the Green Futures Fund it was divided three ways, and that there's three separate accounts for that farmland preservation, but there was two other uh, components to that, parks and things like that. Is that correct? No, not anymore. Everything is everything is diverted to farmland preservation right now. Green Future Funds was a $20 million bond that was floated and it was divided up based on population. Every municipality got a fair share based on the number of residents in that town, in that municipality. And it had a life, I think a life cycle of 10 years. And at the time, you know, Whitehall just didn't have those available parcels to purchase for the need. And now we're at the dire need where we could use that money. And you're correct, uh, Commissioner Roman. It wasn't just farmland preservation, it was open space, it was trails, it was a coverall. And so yes, the Lehigh County, when that when that program came to its life, life, uh, life cycle, instead of extending it, they disbanded it and they moved the money. What, some of the funds were moved to a farmland preservation fund that the county funds every year out of their budget. It's not, there's not a set amount. So this year could be more, next year could be less. Um, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mr. Hosa. In county, county parks and uh, recreation sites are now funded through the county capital plan. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Hosa. You're welcome. All right, Mrs. Fennell, do you want to put her through, or is she satisfied with the non-answer I gave her? <laughs> Mrs. Fennell. You're not unmuted. Hi, Lorianne Thano, 3107 North 3rd Street, Whitehall. Uh, my question really was answered, I guess. I mean, it would have been nice to have known the amount, you know, to preserve farmland. I highly believe in preserving farmland and, you know, it's something to consider to make the contribution. I like to see numbers, you know, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Well, Ms. Mrs. Fennell, to answer that, like I said, I was I was unaware, and I'm sure the board was unaware that anything like this was even happening. And I have no idea what the dollar figure is. The mayor could inform you or fill you in on that because no one has disclosed the amount yet. So, right, I understand, Joe. I like I said, I believe in transparency, and there's the numbers should have been definitely notified to the commissioners to say, hey, look, this is the amount that's needed to preserve the fire. And unfortunately, it was not told to you, so it's not your fault. Understood. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? I want to move on here. No, no, we have no one else. Okay. I would also just add that at one point there was a comment, you know, remarks made no more open space. So, I mean, you can take it either way. Um, it would have been nice to know the numbers, but, you know, if the commissioners give a message that we're not going to do anything else as far as recreation or open space to expand it, then, uh, you know, that's that's something that was considered, I'm sure, by the administration. Okay. Getting back to reports of public officials. Uh, Mr. Fisher, you've gone. Mr. Schloniger, would you like to go next? Uh, not at this time. Thank you very much. Okay. He's the first. Mr. Roman. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Marks. I uh, just want to mention, I'll hold up my little uh, binder here. Um, last weekend, I attended the uh, the uh, newly elected municipal officials conference down in uh, Horsham. It's a two day event uh, through ice and snow and sleet, but uh, it was very very informative. I really enjoyed it. Um, they're also going to be giving me the um, the record, the video, the audio video record of the uh, conference so that I could review it and um, possibly. Uh, report back to the board some of the things that I've 
learned that there's a lot of good things going on in the world of municipal governance, a few best practices that I picked up. So uh, it was a, it was a good conference. All right. Anything else? That's it. All righty. Mr. Warren. I'll be uh, short and sweet. I attended the uh, recreation commission meeting last month uh, as well, along with uh, commissioner Ginder. And the board did agree that they would consider all new the land development proposals on a case by case basis. Um, there was 1 proposal that was in front of them that was tabled at the planning commission that they, they did not discuss because it wasn't wasn't relevant at the time. But I guess just a quick note, we, we got to figure out a way to get the, the information to them. Um, in a timely fashion, so they can provide feedback and. I only say that in its context that the planning commission meeting is before the recreation commission meeting. And so, um, by the time the agenda for the planning commission hits, um, the recreation commission doesn't physically meet to consider that plan until after that meeting. So that's something we have to work out. All right. That's all I have. Thank you. Understood. Thank you. Mr. Ginder. Yeah, just 1 thing. I. I want to extend a thank you for myself and the board. Uh, we got the annual reports back uh, for the end of 2021 for the administration. Uh, I want to thank Jack Myers for putting that together. And the planning and zoning report came from Lee Rackus. Uh, Tony Cook uh, got us the recreation year and recreation report. And we got a report from the Environmental Council. And I apologize, I don't know who put that together. And Chief Nelson got us the fire department report and Chief March the police department report. And, and as I read through all those reports, uh, for what we've been through and, and money and this, that, and everything else, you know, I, I, I have to say that all these departments and the people that have run them and, and the employees of this township, you read these reports and, and, you know, we can be proud we are Whitehall. Yeah, we can always do more and we can always do better. There's no question about that, but but I'm certainly not going to take anything back from any of these departments. I think everybody stepped up and, and really did a good job. And I think if you read through these reports, you'll see that that there there is progress being made in Whitehall. And and I think we can be awfully proud. And that's all I have. All right, and myself, uh, you stole some of my thunder there. I'd like to thank all the bureau chiefs. I mean, some of those reports were very comprehensive and you know very informational, and and, and thank them for their diligence and, and the time that it took with, to put those together. Uh, Chief Nelson, I have a question for you. Are you still on? Maybe he's not on. Not seeing him. All right, not a problem. He's there. He's on. What was the name he's under? Dave Nelson. It's under David, I believe. Or it was earlier. I don't see him. I don't see him either. That's okay. It's no big deal. Okay, moving on. That's all I have. Uh, mayor's report. Um, I'll run down this quickly. Um, I'm on the executive uh, committee for the Pennsylvania State Mayors Association. And uh, one of the goals that we have this year is to try to induce the legislature to allow municipal uh, entities to have radar uh, to track speed. Um, we're the only state in the country that does not allow radars uh, to be utilized by municipal police departments. Uh, and unfortunately, the numbers that we have uh, indicating the uh, uh, number of deaths uh, and the number of accidents are all very high by comparison to the rest of the, of the country. Uh, we need to push our legislature as we have uh, I, going back when uh, Ed was in office here, I'm sure for a few years uh, that, that group was working on that and we're still working on it. Um, I, I'm, I'm hoping we can get that done this year. 
I think it's going to be helpful for all of us to sit on MacArthur Road and watch people go through uh, red lights and uh, wind up doing 60 miles an hour going down MacArthur Road. We could solve that problem if we can get that radar. Um, so moving on, um, uh, as you know, we've been working on the uh, plan to sell parcel along MacArthur Road and West Columbia Street. We're still working on that. That's moving forward. Um, I uh, met with a resident of the Strawberry Patch in Fullerton uh, to talk with her about problems that they, uh, they're they having at that senior facility. And uh, we're going to be discussing that in a group setting uh, this month. Um, we, uh, we've been all through January looking for, well, before January, even looking for a public works director. Um, and we have hired somebody who's going to be starting on Monday. His name is uh, um, Sheldon Christman. Uh, he's a supervisor in public works down in Allentown. Uh, he's doing, uh, he's running crews of 50 people who are doing uh, laying down macadam and uh, improving roads. Uh, so he has great experience with two biggest problems we have, uh, getting roads built and getting the snow cleaned up. So we're looking forward to seeing him next Monday. Um, I uh, met with staff uh, with uh, Chief Marks and Chief Nelson and others to talk about changes that are anticipated in the Lehigh County Communications Center. Uh, that's moving forward and we're uh, happy to know that uh, the county considers uh, both Chief Marks and Chief Nelson as appropriate to be part of their uh, core group to determine how we're going to move forward. Um, we, uh, we reviewed a lot, an awful lot of uh, transitions between the uh, Lehigh Valley Health Network proposals. And uh, it, it's been a, a lot of work for the staff, but we're getting closer to doing something. Um, and I know the LNL has been working hard on this. Uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, the uh, LVHN was in front of the Legal and Legislative Committee again uh, along with, uh, I guess, a total of six things we were looking at. Uh, so the LNL committee is working pretty hard these days and hoping we can come to uh, completion of, a, of a, a plan both for LVHN and uh, a resolution to where we are with the other things they're looking at. Um, Civil Service Commission has been busy because uh, we're going through uh, potential uh, police officers uh, reviewing and uh, in the past month and a half, I think we've uh, gone through about 16 people on uh, on the hiring list. Uh, pretty soon we're going to have to be doing a new list throughout the uh, uh, the 11, uh, I think it's 11 municipal uh, police departments that uh, test jointly. Um, the, as Chuck pointed out, the uh, Environmental Advisory Council uh, has brought themselves up to date and they're moving forward, looking at things uh, such as single use uh, plastic containers and some other things that have come to their attention. Uh, completed a lease with the uh, Laurel Fire Station number one. Uh, we're going to be utilizing that facility. Uh, we find we've uh, uh, we've completed the lease and we're using that now and continue to. Uh, we've interviewed applicants for operations secretary in the development office, and we've just completed that. Uh, recently, wasn't last month, but we have uh, a new person moving into the development office. Um, 
I attended the uh, Communities That Care meeting. Um, that's a group that is sponsored by Penn State and Whitehall has a very active and uh, exceptional response from the CTC Communities That Care uh, trying to formulate programs that help improve the educational and social responsibilities that the uh, school district has. Uh, met, met with District Magistrate Heffelfinger and uh, Chief Marks um, and uh, Chief Mazzatelli and uh, Officers Chrisman and yeah, just lost the name. Um, putting together a program to divert kids who've gotten themselves into some problems, uh, particularly with truancy, uh, but it's expanding beyond that to guarantee that they will not be um, moved into the system, but if they complete this diversionary program, uh, which will be a, a specific number of hours of community uh, assistance, they'll be able to get out without having uh, something tagged to their judicial record. Um, and uh, you should know that the uh, State Historical Preservation Council wound up approving the Thomas Iron Company homes uh, to be forwarded to the Federal Register of Historic Places, and that's going to happen. Um, uh, based upon conversation with, uh, with Kenny, um, one thing that you all should know is that we have a new mall manager, John Ferrara, has moved on and uh, he's been replaced by Colleen Ansbach, uh, whose first issue uh, as I spoke with her was to clean up the litter on the mall property and to get greater diversity and improvement in the quality of the uh, stores that are going to be moving into the mall. Uh, she's dedicated to getting that done and uh, brings tidings from, si from Simon saying how much they appreciate uh, where we are with that, with that organization. Um, and we should be able to have our workshop meeting um, hopefully next week because uh, we'll have that turned over hopefully before the end of this month. Uh, unfortunately, it will just be able to accommodate the workshop meetings because we don't have the audio video components that we need to uh, record. And uh, so it, it, we've been hit by uh, the uh, supply chain problem. Uh, we made decisions back uh, over six months ago to include the improvement into the uh, into the Board of Commissioners meeting room and into the adjacent uh, meeting room that we have there. Uh, we, we're just getting caught by not having adequate uh, uh, supplies of the audio video systems that we need to have. So hopefully um, April, again, it could be May, we don't know right now. Um, so that's a, a smattering of the things we've looked at this month. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Madam Treasurer. Treasurer's report. Is Mrs. Corrin on? Uh, yes. You're now unmuted. Uh, thank you. Hi, it's, uh been 42 days since I took over and that's 336 plus hours and I must say it's been a very very long ex learning experience for me but I sent to you on February 3rd all the commissioners a report from what's been going on in the tax office and please be assured that we're moving in the direction that you want us to be um, I got you all the reports that you asked for if there's anything else you would like just let me know I've gone over the report 
that was uh, attorney gross gave me and I've implemented changes to everything in the tax office that was recommended. The biggest thing that I'm very proud of at this point is every penny that comes into the tax office. The person will be emailed the receipt. We will keep an electronic copy of the receipt and we will also keep a, co a paper copy of every penny that's brought into that tax office. So we will have no problems in the future with any money. Um, I'm looking for recommendations of, of for what I can do to make things better, to make things uh, more transparent in the tax office. I believe we're moving in the right direction. I have a great staff and I'm just moving ahead. And if you want any more reports, please let me know. That's all I have. Thank you, Mrs. Corn. Question. Go ahead, Mr. Roman. Yes, um, Mrs. Corn, is is there any vacancies that need to be filled in that office? There actually is. We have one moving over to Lee Rackus's area uh, that's been posted. Um, I'm hoping we can get that filled because with March 1st coming around the corner, we're only going to be able to have one window open for the taxpayers because uh, we're losing a clerk and I don't think we'll have anybody in that position before the tax office does open, but we will do our best to make sure every taxpayer is served. Is there anything the Board of Commissioners can do to help with those vacancies? No, I, I believe our human resource is taking care of it. It's um, it's gonna be trying because we haven't been open for over a year. And uh, two of the staff, I think two of the staff members haven't been there when the office was actually open. So it's gonna be a learning experience as for three of us, two of us have experience. Um, plus we have one vacancy right now. So I'm hoping to get that filled as soon as possible. Thank you. Uh, is, is there, um, is, is Jack Myers on the line yet here? I am. Uh, can you tell us about what, what, what amount of time do you think you're gonna to need to be able to fill that position? Well, that depends on whether it's a union position. So by contract, it has to be posted for a five day period of time, uh, five business days. And if there's nobody there, I mean, we've been interviewing secretarial people. We, we could be able to turn it around relatively quickly. It depends on um, what happens from uh, the union perspective with um, Anybody from inside the township in the union environment, should they wish to transfer into that job, they have the ability to do so by seniority. If not, I mean, we have a bunch of applications on file that we could review and, and try and work with Tina to turn that around relatively quickly. Oh, great, great. I just didn't, I didn't want her to be shorthanded at the very time that she's actually getting some, some traction and some positive results. I didn't want her to be shorthanded. No, I understand. I mean, she's doing a great job so far. Thank you. All right, with that being said, thank you, Mrs. Corn. Anything else? Nope, that's it. Okay, I have one I have one thing that I passed over. Uh, Mayor, are you still there? Yes. What are the intentions on opening the lobby for our citizens? Um we have work to do in the treasurer's office and in development and in um, administration. Uh, the uh, windows were determined to be lacking in uh, lacking in some qualities that they uh, didn't anticipate were were going to be a problem. Um, so we're going to be putting uh, some uh depressions underneath the uh the windows in order to guarantee that people can uh put the uh, information they have <laughs> underneath and and uh the old windows um not the old ones the new windows that are in there uh were sliders and they're they're uh bulletproof but the fact was that uh, we'd have to open up those windows every time we needed to get something to 
the the uh, people working in any of those offices. So there's work uh, that's got to be done to do that. Um, and at this point, I'm not sure we have a, a clear fix on that. Jack, did you hear anything just recently as to when that'll be accommodated? No, simply put, we just have to put trays, service trays in each of our service windows there because of, uh, of the tough nature of opening those doors. We have two of the trays, the two that'll service the tax office, the remaining three for development and administration should be there, you know, within the next couple days. And then Skepton will come out and install them and we'll be ready to open to the public. So Jack, do you anticipate that this will possibly be by the 1st of March? Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, fair enough. And I, I take it, Mayor, you're gonna announce this on our township website or wherever necessary, so. Yes, we will. Okay. Joe, Back and also. Question. Yep. Will there Go be ahead, two-way Joe. mics at the windows if they're now closed permanently? No, no they're, they didn't, at this point, they did not believe that those were needed. Um, what do you, uh, Dewey Engineering and uh, Skepton, you know, they said that we could take a look at that and if that needs to be addressed, we can easily perform those tasks. Thank you. And the other you, thing too that I was informed today is that the public meeting room, absent the audio visual stuff, will be turned over to the township by the end of the month. So conceivably, should the township wish to do so, any non-recorded meeting, uh, the board of commissioners workshop, the um, zoning hearing board meeting, those could all be conducted in the township build in, in the public meeting room. We just wouldn't be able to record. Did they give you any type of hypothetical on when the recording devices will be introduced? So we have an idea on when we could possibly get back there. I know the mayor conveyed his opinion on it. Well, you could do the workshops there next month, but no, understood. Uh, but the recorded meetings have to be recorded. So yeah. Um, April, they're still looking at a delivery date of April for most most of that equipment that's going to be used for um, the audiovisual stuff. All right, fair enough. Thank you, Jack. Yep. All right, anyone else? Anything? Commissioner Marks? Yes. Do we have a list of alternative meeting sites that we could use until that um, room is ready for audiovisual uh, capabilities. Do we have any any options? Well, I've answered about that before. Uh, I don't know if you want to chime in, Mayor or, or Jack, and, and answer that question. I uh, I don't have a uh, an answer for you right now. Would 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 the school district be accommodating by any chance? Um, well, you know, we, for a long time, we weren't going to be able to, but now that you mentioned that they've changed their meeting date. So maybe it is a possibility. They just changed that. Uh, so yeah, Andy, I'll take a look. Yeah. Tell, tell them that we'll clean up after ourselves when we're done. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you everyone. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I move. Mr. Ginder, do I have a second? Second. I don't know who that was. Mr. Roman? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. All right. Good night. Have a good night. All right. Thanks. Good night, everyone.